In 1972, a two-year-old Chinese boy fell from a table and went into a coma. When he woke up after six days, he was unable to talk and unable to move. Like any parent, his mother was terribly distressed, yet her distress was multiplied by the fact that she could not afford to place her son in a nursing home. Instead, she cared for her son herself, and her care has shown the unfathomable depths of a mother's love. You see, because he is unable to move, this son is liable to terrible bed sores. So for the past 30 years, his mother has done the unbelievable. She has carried her son on her back. As of May 2002, the mother was 65 years old and weighed 88 pounds. Her son, now a grown man, weighed 180 pounds. On many occasions, the mother has fallen and fractured her bones while carrying her son, yet she continues to carry him. When asking this mother how that she can do it, her reply is simple. He ain't heavy, for he's my son. For the past several weeks, we have been considering the various one another statements in the New Testament. Today, I want us to consider this subject, bear one another's burdens, bear one another's burdens. And I want us to look together in Galatians chapter 6 at verses 1 through 5. The Bible says in Galatians 6 verses 1 through 5, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Bearing one another's burdens. In the Christian walk of life, it is possible for a believer to be overtaken in a, any trespass according to the Apostle Paul in these verses that we've just read. Believers who have trusted Christ as their Savior and Lord are delivered immediately from the penalty of sin, but they still have to live in a world where sin and evil is present. In other words, it is possible for a believer to be caught and taken unawares into sin through choices and actions. From time to time, believers become weak in a moment of temptation, and sometimes believers deal with a wayward nature within that causes them to be taken by surprise into sin. Now, in this context, Paul tells believers in the body of Christ to bear one another's burdens uh, when another believer is overtaken in sin. So let me ask you these questions. How are believers to bear one another's burdens when a fellow believer sins? Likewise, why are believers in the body of Christ to bear one another's burdens in these tough and sticky situations? Then, how are believers to bear one another's burdens in the context of an overtaken brother or sister in Christ. To these questions and from this text, I want to point out to you a couple of insights that will help us to know how to biblically bear one another's burdens as Christians in the body of Christ. To begin with, the first insight that I want to point out is this. The action that we need to take in bearing one another's burdens the action that we need to take in bearing one another's burdens. 
When a brother or sister in the body of Christ falls into sin, there are a number of actions that people take. For example, some rejoice. Sadly enough, there are some whose hearts are not right. And instead of grieving with that believer who has sinned, it brings joy to their hearts. Let me say there is nothing positive that comes from a believer falling into sin. As a matter of fact, when one member in the body suffers, all suffer. A hand doesn't rejoice, friend, when a toe steps on a thumbtack. No, it hurts every part of the body. Also, some reveal, some reveal, as with this as with the previous action, some choose to reveal to others and the world around them when another believer sins. Regretfully, some Christians enjoy spreading news such as this. In the Bible, when Noah got drunk, he was lying in his tent naked and Ham, one of his sons, laughed and made an amusement out of his father. However, Noah's other sons entered backward into the tent and covered their father's nakedness. Friend, love covers a multitude of sins. It doesn't go around revealing to everyone what has happened. Additionally, some reject, some reject, some view another believer who has fallen as too big of a problem and too dirty of a situation to mess with. Some people are like the Levite and the priest that wouldn't help the fallen man on the Jericho Road in Luke chapter 10. However, rejecting a fallen brother or sister in Christ is certainly not Christ-like. For God's word tells us to restore, to restore. Let me read again verse number one, which says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. To restore means to correct, to fix, and to put back aright what is broken or torn. Among doctors, this word has the idea of putting a broken or dislocated bone back into joint. Among fishermen, this word has the idea of mending a torn net. Among soldiers, this word has the idea of equipping and, um, and preparing an army for another battle. Among sailors, this word has the idea of making a ship fit for another voyage. So when a brother or sister in Christ is overtaken in any trespass, we as members of the body of Christ, instead of rejoicing, instead of revealing, instead of rejecting, we should choose to restore them. We can restore them by helping them regain their footing spiritually. We can restore them by helping them to realize that they can be forgiven of their sin if they will confess it to the Lord. We can restore them by helping them restart living for God and restart serving God. May we choose to bear one another's burdens when a brother or sister in Christ has sinned by restoring them. Additionally, I want to point out a second insight, which is the aim we need to have in bearing one another's burdens. The aim that we need to have in bearing one another's burdens. Let me read verse 2 again. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Jesus Christ? Well, consider the words of Christ himself in John 13, verse 34, which says, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. 
Then consider the words of Paul in Galatians 5 and verse 14, which says, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Our aim in bearing one another's burdens is to fulfill the royal law of Christ. So when a brother or sister in Christ sins, we are motivated by the love of Christ to reach out to them and restore them. Now, when the term law is used, I, I'm reminded of those who are legalist and those who are legalistic like the Pharisees. You see, the legalist ignores those around them who sin. The legalist shuns those around them who sin. The legalist throws stones at those around them who sin. The legalist throws away those around them who sin. The legalist hurts those around them who sin. However, those who follow Christ and those who want to fulfill the royal law of Christ, they must reach out in love and restore their brothers and sisters who have been overtaken in sin. Now, I understand that bearing one another's burdens is not always an easy task, but it is the love of Christ that compels us to restore them. We are in the body of Christ. We are members of the same body. We are to care for one another. And those of us in the household of faith must understand that each one of us, we are valuable to Christ and we are valuable to the body of Christ. We're not to throw away a brother or sister who has sinned. No, we are to reach out in love and with mercy and grace and restore them. Let me say, the way we treat a brother or sister who has sinned is evidence of our own spiritual condition. Legalists always condemn, but those who love Christ and those who are mature in Christ, they always try to restore. When we restore other believers who have fallen, we are fulfilling the royal law of love, the royal law of Christ. Make this your aim. So why are we to bear one another's burdens? It fulfills the royal law of Christ. Now, I want to point out a third insight in this subject, which is the, the approach that we need to have in bearing one another's burdens. The approach that we need to have in bearing one another's burdens. How are we to bear one another's burdens? What approach are we to take in this act of restoring a fallen brother or sister in Christ? Notice the latter part of verse 1 again. You who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Our approach for bearing one another's burdens should involve a spirit of gentleness. A gentle spirit is one that is mild and even-tempered. And it is contrasted to one that is harsh in dealing with others. This disposition comes from the Holy Spirit. Paul is telling us <coughs> as believers in the body of Christ that we are to bear one another's burdens with a spirit of gentleness. Now this means that we are to help those who have sinned with patience, with mildness, with easiness, instead of being harsh or critical towards them. Friend, when a believer sins, they are already hurting. They are already discouraged. They know that they have done wrong deep down within. Instead of pushing them down, may we approach them with gentleness, much like the Holy Spirit works in our hearts. When a doctor puts a bone back into joint, back into place, why well, you want that doctor to be as gentle as possible for you don't want him to hurt him anymore, uh, hurt you any more than you're already hurting. Moreover, 
we should approach our brothers and sisters who have fallen not only with a spirit of gentleness, but with caution. Now, when trying to help someone who is in sin, we must be careful not to get involved in their sin. If you're trying to help someone of the opposite gender, it's good to have your spouse or another Christian with you just to make sure that you don't uh, be overtaken by sin with them. Uh, also, when dealing with someone who has a bad spirit, you and I must be careful that you don't pick up that same negative disposition that they possess. Our approach in bearing one another's burdens should be with caution. Then, I want to say it should be with humility. Notice with me verse 3 of our passage. Uh, for it is, uh, excuse me, for if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he is uh, 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 something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Members of the body of Christ understand that we are uh, where we are because of the grace of God. We acknowledge that we are all sinners saved by God's grace, and we acknowledge that on this side of heaven, we still wrestle with the old nature. So when dealing with another believer who has fallen, we should never enter such a scenario pridefully or arrogantly, for it is only by God's grace that we are not in their same situation. So what are we to do in bearing one another's burdens, restore those who are overtaken by sin. Subsequently, why are we to bear one another's burdens? To fulfill Christ's royal law of love. Furthermore, how are we to bear the burdens of one another? With gentleness, with caution, and with humility. Remember, if you know of another believer who has fallen, I challenge you to help them bear their burdens by reaching out to them with the love of Christ and by restoring them. You never know when it may be you that needs another believer to help you bear your own burdens. God bless you.